Oh god, Adam, what are we about to play? Uh, we're about to play Sakura Angels. This is gonna be a disaster, isn't it? It's gonna be fun. Uh, as fun as a visual novel can get. Totally. Well, fun, quote unquote. It's gallery. Not really, it's not as much Damn. of a game. Well, of course. It's not as much of a game as it is gonna be in it. Adventure. I don't even. Uh, stop caressing the fucking. Well, just, there's no there's no boobs on the screen to oh, caress. Well, then just start the game so there will okay. be boobs. First first screen is gonna be boobs. I'm sure it is. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. It's not boobs. Hold on. Let me move this. This doesn't count. Every, Every night, night, I had the same dream. Every night. I'm always brought back to this place without fail. And then every morning, I'll wake up with no memory of this place at all until the next time I fall asleep. Damn. Not a single night has went by without my consciousness being dragged into this abyss. This realm is devoid of light, so much so that I can't even see my hand in front of my face, no matter how desperately I wave it. The concept of sound is just as absent, my steps silent, and my distressed cries swallowed by the bordering darkness as quickly as they have left my mouth. I'm in a bleak, barren wasteland of nothingness. Spending, my pro any, pro eh, spending any prolonged amount of time here begins to make me doubt even my own existence. Yet, despite feeling suffocated by a striking absence of anything, I know I'm not alone. Something is watching me. Stalking me from the shadows. This is already pretty creepy. Yeah, it is. God damn. I can't say for sure what it is, but every once in a while, I'll catch sight of something from the corner of my view. A pair of burning, bright eyes fixated purely on me. They hate me. Despise me. There's an overwhelming sense of animosity radiating from whoever they belong to. I know they want nothing more than to lash out and attack me, but something is holding them back. A force they truly despise. Invisible chains that bind and restrict them from the one thing that's on their mind. At first, when I began dreaming about this place, the eyes were distant, like glimmering stars. But with each passing night, the eyes seem to inch ever closer and shine ever brighter. This is fucking creepy. Yeah. But, oh, I think whatever force has been holding them from me is beginning to fade. What will happen when these eyes... Those special eyes. Yes. My brand! Reach me. I shudder to think. I know it's just a dream, so I shouldn't be afraid. But... Everything I experience here is so vivid. None of the usual murky haze that shrouds such dreamlike environments seems to exist here at all. I have perfect clarity. I can feel the stagnant, freezing air all around me, enough to incite a shiver out of me every once in a while. Since I'm so used to this dream, I know how it'll end. I'll wade through the darkness for what seems like an eternity, never finding anything, until the morning finally comes and pulls me out of this nightmare. At least, that was how it usually ended. Something is different tonight. Those hateful, burning eyes that always kept just out of sight before. I'm suddenly confronted by them. Never before have they been so close. Never before have I stared straight back into them. Their narrowed, piercing gaze roots me to the spot and a shooting pain surges through me. I can't move. I can't breathe. And then, from out of the darkness, a crooked smile spreads. Just as sinister as the eyes. Okay, this is really creepy. So close. I can practically taste the freedom. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, there's voices. Oh shit. There is voices. It won't be long now. Enjoy the peace while you can, boy, before your days are numbered. Should I be reading the boy then? <laughs> and then everything shall change. I don't know. I don't know. That was 
creepy. It is not boobs, and you do not owe me anything because you already bought me lunch today, so thank you. That, that, that. Ugh. My head is killing me. These morning migraines are the worst. Every morning, without fail, I always wake up to a sensation not unlike my skull being pounded by a jackhammer. Ouch. Thump. 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 That sucks, dude. It's almost like a heartbeat. I think you need some fucking Advil or something. I feel like my head is going to split open. It's weird, though, because even though the pain is so intense, it never lasts long. In the space it takes me to get up and head for school, the pain is usually reduced to just a dull throb at the back of my skull by then. So, it isn't too much of a hassle in the grand scheme of things, but it certainly isn't a fun way to wake up. I just find it odd how consistent it seems to be. Anyway, enough pondering these weird mysteries. It's time to tackle the day. After a moment of wrestling with my blanket, I swing my legs around and drag myself out of bed. A quick look at my bedside clock tells me it's still early. Too early. If I had if I had it my way, the world wouldn't start until at least a good way into the afternoon. But sadly, life just isn't that wonderful. Pulling back the curtains to let the light flood into my room, I suppress the urge to let out a hiss, almost blinding myself in the process. Too bright. The rest of my time getting ready is spent fighting with my uniform, a tie becoming all the more problematic to put on when you're half asleep. Oh god, I think I've actually got it. My, I've got my hand stuck in it. How do you tie a tie? Do you even know how to tie a tie? Because I don't know how to fucking tie a tie. No idea. Almost choking myself to death in the most pathetic fight ever, I finish putting on the tie, the rest of my uniform complying peacefully with me. Unable to find a comb, I settle for just flattening my hair down with my hands. That's me. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> Blinking into the mirror, I'm left staring back at someone with messy, black hair. That's my not me. My hair isn't black. It's dark, eh, though. It's really it's close dark. close enough. <laughs> See? Yeah. They knew. Somewhat dressed and somewhat ready, I stumble out of my room, my legs still not fully awake. Yeah, it's you. Uneven steps carry me dangerously down the stairs, and I soon emerge into the kitchen. I am greeted by silence. Aw. The kitchen is empty. Aw. A familiar scene for me. The fuck are your parents? Ah, my parents are what you might call workaholics. Ah. See, he answered your question right there. This, this game is psychic. Basically, they spend more, more time at their respective jobs than they ever do here. I only ever get to catch them during the evening when while they're eating, and then everyone is off to bed and the cycle repeats. Don't get me wrong, I understand that they have to work in order to keep us living comfortably, so I don't hate them for it. It just gets... I don't know. Lonely? Yes. Ah, well. There's no use moping about oh it. Oh my god, Adam, I just realized. What? Your mom has seen our channel, she's gonna see this. Shh. <laughs> Reagan's gonna probably see it. Oh no! No. No, she's not gonna click this. Reagan, don't click this. Oh no, please. Well, if she's if she if she hears that, she's gonna fucking your eight year old sister is gonna see these these bobbies. These bobbies. These bobbies. The baps. The baps. Whoops. Oh no. It's... Oh no. Can I please continue? Yes, you can. Fucking... God. Whatever. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, also, we're gonna have to make a decision soon. Yeah. On whether or not to keep the voices in, because if I'm going to read, I don't know if I want to be talking over the voices. Maybe we can change that. We'll figure that out by next time. Well, I think I think there's a. I think you can turn them off. Probably. It's been like this for years, so I don't know why I was getting all emotional about it now. That. Okay. The plus side of them not being around is that I quickly had to learn how to cook for myself. That is not you. It's amazing how fast you can adapt to that sort of stuff when you're starving. I don't think I have enough time for anything fancy to eat for breakfast, so I'll just settle for toast. Is he gonna run out of the house with it, with the toast in his fucking mouth? Yes. You can never go wrong with toast. He's gonna bump into someone at a corner. Okay, you might be able to go wrong with toast. Mm. I have sudden traumatic flashbacks to when I... To when the toaster erupted into flames. See, that's you. <laughs> ah. Probably. What a day that was. But I've learned from my mistakes now. It won't happen a second, a uh, third time. Christ, you guys just need to buy a new toaster. And set it- fucking put the settings lower. Shit, man. Having- <laughs> having devoured the only slightly charred toast, I sling my bag over my shoulder before starting for the front door. 
Dude can't cook for shit. His fucking toast is always burnt. I <laughs> I give the empty house one last look over before opening the front door. It's kind of depressing to have no one to say goodbye to. But again, but again, this has been the same ever for every weekday morning since forever ago. I'm not a good talker like you. Well, I'm just used to it. Yeah, you talk a lot. Well, I'm oh, sorry. I love you. No, I mean because I had to read stuff for church, remember? No, yeah. The sun is shining high in a cloudless sky. Birds are chirping overhead. Waves of students are passing by. I don't see any. Happily chatting with one another as they make their way to school. This this town is awfully lonely. It's also horrible. What? That No, oh. that's what he says. Oh. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. I'm not much of a morning person, so I can't even begin to fathom how everyone can be so bright-eyed and bushy-tailed right now. I can agree with that. I mean, it's it's taking all my willpower just to be able to put a foot in front of the other without crumbling crumpling to the ground. See, I thought if I could get through waking up at 6 a.m. during high school, yeah, then I could easily do 8 a.m. classes here in college. No, no you can't no, do that. No, 8 a.m. classes are fucking bullshit. <laughs> Fuck that noise. Also, I think this episode's probably going to be a little short. Okay. I mean, it's, we're already at like 10 or 12 minutes. I just have to hope the breakfast kicks in and gives me the energy I need before I'm forced to literally drag myself through the school gates. Dot dot dot. Y yes While keeping my head down and my eyes glued to the ground as I soldiered on, I suddenly notice that the vibrant atmosphere before from before is gone. Oh no. Silence has completely taken over. My steps the only thing making any noise. Oh no. The air is still. Oh god. Huh? That's a bit strange. Bringing my head up, I met with an unsettling sight. The street is deserted. Shit. No students. No cars. And even the cheerful chirping of birds is gone. What? I hurry on forward, hoping to at least run to somebody. Okay, Adam. I think, Anyone. I think we picked up a fucking horror visual novel. I think we did. <laughs> I was promised boobs. <laughs> even the sun's once golden rays seem muted. The world tinging, tinged in dreary tones, but there still isn't a cloud in the sky. Okay, this is definitely starting to freak me out. Me too. I need to just... A splitting pain shoots through my head, stopping me in my tracks. Fuck. Like a searing poker being thrust through my skull. A searing poker? Uh, yeah, like, you know, the fireplace yeah, but, pokers? Yeah, it's still weird. A headache? Specific. Now? Nothing is making any sense. Desperately trying to keep myself upright as I clutch my hand to my head, I stagger forward. Unlike the headache from before that gradually died down, this one only seems to be getting worse. MC couldn't know. Thump. 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 It won't stop at all. I'm brought to my knees. I can hardly even think straight, my head threatening to explode at any moment. And then, through gritted teeth and a pained expression, I see it. Something that shouldn't exist. Yet it clearly does. It's conf as confirmed by my own terrified eyes. I just, okay, what is What it? is it? What the fuck is A that? A monster! Shit! No! No! Ah! Oh. That's the only word that can come to my scrambled mind. A hulking, grotesque mask of flesh with gnarled fangs, red, silted eyes, seething with hate. The closest thing I can relate to it would be a dog, but no dog I know of has three times the size of me, its form practically eclipsing the sun. It snorts with flared nostrils, something like steam being exhaled out. Given its tense stance and the fact that it's blocking my way, I can only assume it's here for me. But, why? It loves you. Dude, I would totally dig a dating sim where you could you could date the monsters instead of the fucking, the chicks. What the hell is it, Erica? That it looks like a Satan. I think we need to find out next time what it is. Oh, God. If yeah. you say so, there, oh, there were no baps in this episode. Wow. No, absolutely no baps. Wow. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, if you like this episode and our voice acting, uh, don't forget... <coughs> my voice. Uh, yes, beautiful. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and to uh, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye, guys. Bye. I'm surprised there's no boobs. I know. I felt. I thought that would be like the first panel. Yeah, this is actually kind of creepy. <laughs>